Yo, what's going on? Welcome to this Apprentice Nation quick set. This is entitled Disability Inclusion is Good for the Workplace. My name is CJ and I have a disability. I have Asperger's. Asperger's is a neurological disability that affects the way I interact socially with others and my awareness of social norms such as common sense and non-verbal communication. I was diagnosed at the age of four years old. Throughout my schooling, I had additional support in the classroom. And as an adult, I now am aware I have to carefully manage my emotions, depending on the social setting. I can have good days and bad days, good weeks and bad weeks, and good months and not so good months too. Before I continue this quick set, I would like you to take a look at this image. Take a few seconds to identify and count how many illustrated people you think have a disability. How many did you count? 10, 15, 20? Sorry, it's a trick question. The answer could be all of them. Everybody here could potentially have a disability. The point I wanted to make is like myself, that not all disabilities are visual. Whilst in the workplace, you probably will come across many people with disabilities and you may just not know it. So let's break down for you the four main types of disabilities. Physical. It's a condition that impacts a person's physical ability, stamina, mobility, and their ability to move and use their hands. Developmental. Disability refers to conditions that occur during childhood years, as they affect a person's ability to develop in the same way as others. Behavioral or emotional, including inability to build or maintain interpersonal relationships, and inability to learn and feelings of depression or anxiety. And sensory impaired. This disability is when one of the senses, sight, hearing, smell, touch, taste, or spatial awareness is not at the average functioning level. Common disabilities include limited hearing or visual impairment. Here are some examples of celebrities who you may or may not know who have a disability. Singer-songwriter Stevie Wonder became blind shortly after birth. Gold medal winning Paralympian Ade contracted polio as a child, resulting in damage to his legs. Lauren Ridloff, a deaf actress, former Miss Deaf America and the biggest symbol of deafness in Hollywood. And Nadia Jam Hussein, MBE, a British television chef, author and television presenter, and has suffered with a panic attack disorder for over 20 years. And the list can easily go on. Some people are more expressive and confident about sharing their disability. However, there are many who still feel it's not commonly accepted to display their disability and see it as a barrier to their success in their given field. I am here today to break this stigma and show that there are no limits to what we can achieve. Disability is one of the nine protected characteristics covered by the discrimination law, Equality Act 2010. The law protects people against discrimination, harassment and victimisation at work. Check out the diversity and inclusion quick set preparing for the workplace to give you more insight and a broader perspective. It is the responsibility of every organisation to embrace inclusion for all, raise awareness and implement existing laws and policies promoting the rights of persons with disabilities. That may include engaging and in training all employees participate in programs such as Disability Awareness in the Workplace Training. DAWT gives employees and staff practical advice on how to be confident, encouraging and supportive of employees with disabilities and so enable them to be successful and valued members of the workforce. I spoke to Harry about his speech impediment. My name is Harry Norton and I have learning disabilities and also physical disabilities. I currently work at, at, at a football club and a rugby club as a steward. It, I haven't been doing that for long but I'm really enjoying it and I'm also um, I'm also doing volunteering for Achieve Potentials. When I walked in I was really stuttering um, it, and kind of shaking but like, as soon as like, the interviewer was like was trying to do some jokes, try to calm me down, and that really helped me. And then from then, like, 
it, like everything, everything just went so smoothly. I had applied for it, 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 for a job before, it, but it, but it was over for fun, and I just found that like really hard to do because you couldn't it, it you couldn't tell or like what the interviewer was, was, was like. Well, I'm thinking like for facial uh, expressions, which I, which I think that is key. My advice would be it, like, like not to think on if, on if I can't do it, but because if you, because if you put in your head I can't do things, then straight away you can say nah, I I I can do it. But like if you have, but 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 you have. Uh, a my process of oh, working like yes, I can do this, and I can get a job, and I can achieve. But you being literally, being literally on your way. I said this to point you oh, oh, people. Don't let don't let your disabilities hold you back, uh, and just go for your dreams. I would like to pick up on one key point here when addressing and referring to people with disabilities. Avoid passive victim words. In general, refer to the person first and the disability second. People with disabilities are first and foremost people. Labelling a person equates the person with a condition and can be disrespectful. It is preferable to use language that focuses on their abilities rather than their disabilities. Therefore, the use of the terms handicapped, able-bodied and physically challenged is discouraged. Never use special needs. Disabled is acceptable in most contexts. The simple solution is to ask the person to whom you're referring what they prefer. For example, in a professional setting, Cara, when referring to your disability, what terms do you prefer I use? The Channel 4 ad campaign for Tokyo 2020 Paralympics has started to challenge how we discuss disabled athletes with the use of the term superhuman. This received mixed reviews. Superhuman was meant to empower and acknowledge the abilities and achievements of disabled athletes. However, the reality is that people with disabilities are not treated as heroes in their everyday lives. One of the best ways we can contribute to positive change is to empower any person living with disability to embrace their own sense of identity. This is an action for you. Five ways to empower a person with a disability. Number one, See the person first and not the disability. If you haven't spent time with someone who has a disability, it can be a very confronting experience. You might feel unsure about how best to approach them during your first interaction. Remember that people living with a disability just want to feel accepted and included. Number two, ask questions to learn about the person behind the disability. You may be surprised by what you discover when you take the time to ask questions. These insights into their personality can help you find a better way to work together. Number three, listen to the person behind the disability. Communication is a two-way street, but a person living with a disability might take a little longer to let you know what they want to say. Be patient and demonstrate active listening. Number four, encourage decision-making to promote independence for people with disabilities. Remain patient and let them know that you are there only if they need your direct support. And number five, promote disability inclusivity. Building inclusive attitudes will directly combat the feeling of isolation and loneliness many people living with disabilities face. There are multiple benefits of working for an organization that embraces a diverse workplace. According to Forbes magazine 2021 article, Reasons Why Hiring People with Disabilities is Good for Business, reported companies that are keen on hiring disabled employees tend to outperform others for these reasons. People with disabilities have been solving problems with their whole life and tend to bring a strong sense of loyalty to the workplace. Workers with disabilities possess skills and experiences that can offer employees a competitive edge. For example, research shows that many adults with autism possess higher than average abilities in pattern recognition, memory, and mathematics. 
Employees with disabilities can also offer creativity, innovation and varied perspectives on how to confront challenges and get a job done. When experienced in the working world, one of the most rewarding experiences is being part of a successful, high-performing team. Diverse teams can bring a range of experience, expertise and working methods that when combined can deliver great results. Don't single people with disabilities out whilst at work or in your social life. It is okay to be curious, but be sincere and genuine and we will all win. One of my best work experiences was when I shared my disability and it was embraced by my employer. If you don't know where to begin, check out our list of mentors on the Apprentice Nation website. We have several diversity and inclusion specialists who would love to explore the subject with you. By the way, were you aware that Albert Einstein also was an individual with disabilities? And look what he achieved. This is what he had to say. A person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. Peace.